Making an item template can be done entirely by hand, I suppose, with nothing but notepad and WinZip, but everybody I know makes them the same way. You create an example of the item in Visual Studio, get it the way you like it, and then transform it into a template. Do a little tweaking on the template, and you're ready to go. That's what we're going to do here. Now, in the interest of simplicity, the item I'm going to add is just a text file with a little bit of boilerplate text in it. This could actually have a lot of value in a team project. Perhaps you might need to carry around bits and pieces of information, some credentials, server names, those sorts of things. You could put uh, all of these in a text file that was part of the project, so it went into source control, and when people updated it, it got updated there. When you did get latest, you'd get the latest. This is for information over and above what's in a config file, and not heavyweight enough to make you bring up the project portal to go look it up. I'm going to put some very rudimentary information in this text file, but you could make it as complicated as you wanted. So we'll start by right-clicking the project over here in Solution Explorer and choosing Add New Item. This is the New Item dialog, and if I scroll down here, I can find Text File, and I'll just type in the name, Instructions. By the way, when you create a new item this way in the new item dialog, there's no need to type the extension. That's added for you. Just save yourself a couple characters. I especially cringe when I see people typing the extension, getting it wrong, backing up and doing it over. Just type instructions and you get instructions.txt. So typically we'll type these things in. with some sort of placeholders in them. And the expectation is um, whoever would add them in should fill the placeholders in. But I'd like to use template parameters here, rather than expecting the person to go in and fix up all my placeholders into real values. Here's the web page I mentioned earlier that has the list of these template parameters. So they're in the format dollar sign, then the parameter name, and then another dollar sign. Like for example here, safe project name. And there's a whole table of them, and you can see uh, for example, safe item name, the name provided by the user in the add new item dialog box, that kind of thing. And I'm going to take the root namespace right here and use that as my placeholder. And I'm also going to take time which is the time at which we ran the, um, the add new item code. You could put as many different things in here as you wanted. You can look up here and see there's things like the user and uh, if you're working on a website, what the website is, the company name, uh, what machine it was created on, according to your particular needs, whether or not you need any of this information in your actual template. So I'm going to save this file and then on the file menu we have this option to export template. Quite often will prompt me to save the solution. I always say yes, just to be on the safe side. Now we're doing an item template. We only have one project to choose from, so that's the project we're going to use. And when you do an item template, it says, well, you got more than one item in this project, which is the one you want to export? I'd like to export instructions.txt. The next question that it asks is about references. Imagine if the item that I was going to export as a template was a control or some other piece of code that relied on particular references being added into the project in order to function properly. I can actually select some here and then that will end up in the manifest for our template and anyone who adds the item to the project will add those references to their project at the same time. Obviously we don't need any special references in order to process a text file so we'll move on. And I'm going to give it a name. I'll call it instructions. Now, you really should have an icon and a preview image here. They're what show up on that new item dialog, and a text file icon, those sorts of things, relatively simple to add. In the uh, interest of time, I'm going to leave these guys blank. I do have a later demo in which icon and preview images get associated with templates. I don't want to automatically import the template into Visual Studio because I actually intend to edit it a little bit. It's going to write it here. I can't change that. I could copy this path so that I could open up a Windows Explorer onto that path, 
But we just have this checkbox that basically does that for me. So I'm going to leave that checkbox checked and click Finish. Here you see the zip file, instructions.zip. This is the template that was created for me by Visual Studio. I'm going to expand it so that I can edit some of the contents. We'll go in here and I'd like to edit this template, my .vs template file. Now in here you can see the file name that comes out by default, the name of the item, the description that you saw me type in, and there's other information that you can provide as well. We get IntelliSense in here so that you could um, be helped out in creating any of that. The change I want to make here is the actual template content. There's no references being added into my project and there's just one file. It's going to be called whatever they typed.txt based on instructions.txt. And I'm just going to change the type to content. When you're setting things up in your project, you have properties that can include whether it should be compiled when we do a build or copied to the output directory when we do a build or pretty much just ignored when we do a build. And setting the type to content causes it to be copied over to the output directory. It'll also include it in the payload for your ClickOnce manifest if you happen to be writing a ClickOnce application. So with that small change to my template, I'll close it. And I'm just going to refresh the file back onto the zip. So now this instructions.zip has the updated VS template file in it that treats our text file as pure content, which is appropriate. So now I need a different folder open. It's under my documents. Visual Studio 2010 templates. This folder, which is user by user, has two places in it, item templates and project templates. We're making an item template. And it's divided by language. Now, you can argue that an ordinary text file like this is not language specific, and it's not. But most are. So if you wanted it to appear for both languages, you just put it in both folders. So I paste that zip file into this we call magic folder, my documents, Visual Studio 2010, Templates, Item Templates, Visual Basic. Now let's go right back into Visual Studio and say that I want to add another item into this project. Scroll up to the top and there's instructions along with the description I put, instructions for testers and developers. It's got this default icon which isn't very good and it doesn't have any preview image here, but it's here and it's a template. And you'll notice the default file name is Instructions 1. It's got that sort of collision detection so that you know, when you make your third or fourth Windows application, they come out Windows Application 1, 2, and so on. I've got the same thing here. But I can give it any name I want, uh, like Tuesday. And you can see when this is generated that it's different from the original because it's got the project name in it and it's got a timestamp in it. So those template substitutions have happened just as we want it. And that's really all it takes to make an item template. Create an example of the item, possibly hand edit to put some parameters in. If it's code, uh, you may not have to. When you do the export as template, Visual Studio will actually back substitute some of your strings into parameters, and I'll show you that in the next demo. That creates a zip file. Maybe edit some of the contents of the zip file if you need to, then put it into this magic folder under your documents and just like that it's available on the new items menu and that's how simple it is you can actually see that compared to going and finding an old project finding the instructions.txt file from the old project copying it over and editing it you're actually going to save if you switch to uh, item template approach you're going to save the first time you use it it's going to be quicker and that's just how important it is to be able to know how to make templates